الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ما بعد Welcome everyone to this uh, interesting video that I am actually excited to talk about because it's a topic that I think uh, is very insightful. It's just for those type of people who actually look at learning from a very meticulous perspective, meaning they take it very serious. It's not just like, oh yeah, I would like to learn Arabic. Let me learn how to say shukran, how to say salamu alaikum here and there. No, it's actually for someone who actually wants to take uh, his studies to another level. These are very insightful uh, subjects to talk about. So for that reason, I'm very excited to talk about. And um, I am here joined by my brother and a beloved friend, Abu Adam, uh, who is the founder of uh, the Islamic, the Spanish Islamic Institute. Right, is that correct? The Islamic Institute of Spain, yeah. Islamic Institute of Spain. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we want to talk about this particular topic. So I introduce you at the same time, guys, to Abu Adam, in case you guys don't know him. We are very similar in many, in many aspects from uh, the fact that we have, we grew up in the same city, Barcelona, Spain. Uh, we have an African, West, uh, West African father, and a Spanish mother. Our mother tongue is Spanish. We have learned the English. We have learned the Arabic. Uh, so Alhamdulillah, we have a lot of similarities, even when it comes to um, what we are about to talk about right now, which is personality in general. We have a lot of similarities as well. So welcome to, uh, uh, I guess, uh, welcome here, <laughs> uh, Adam. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's actually my pleasure. Uh, I also wanted to say that actually our mother tongue, we have two mother tongues, Spanish mm -hmm. and Catalan in both cases, because our, both our mothers are Catalan and we grew up, uh, you know, actually being bilingual at our own homes. So we, we have uh, very similar experiences when it comes to uh, language learning and language teaching. Mm -hmm. And yes, just as you said, we I think we we actually do even have some uh, similarities when it comes to our personality type and our experiences learning the Arabic language. And one of the reasons why I became so interested in this topic is because uh, just as you said, um, actually, I am very like uh, solution or uh, yeah, solution oriented and, and I like to find solutions and systems. So one of the things that I learned by learning the Arabic language and actually by teaching the Arabic language as well is that different people uh, need like different methods and different systems, you know. And, you know, the question that I used to have in my mind is, you know, how could I develop a system that would work for someone who uh, needs more freedom when it comes to studying? And at the same time, it would work for someone who needs, you know, like a very structured environment, you know, with very clear set rules and dates, you know, because these are two different types of personalities and uh, they need like different methods, you know. So one of the things I realized is that uh, a lot of environments, uh, teaching environments are only created for one type of person. And I myself had some experience uh, studying uh, the Arabic languages. I studied the Arabic languages, the Arabic language, sorry, uh, in quite a, a number of ways. I studied in the, um, how is it called? The, the official language in class. school in, Bar in Barcelona. Yeah, I, I went to class and I also studied in another um, I actually tried to study in these places. Uh, I tried to study in another academy, very famous academy in Barcelona. And I, I quickly realized that the way people are studying in, in that classroom setting was not for me because they were mm. studying very slowly and uh, the approach was not resonating with me. Like I need a, a more hands-on approach. I need to see the, the learning of the language as a problem that needs to be solved. I need to see it as a system that I can break down, you know. And so the, I became very interested uh, in, in the idea of how different personality types uh, require different personality, uh, oh, sorry, different teaching and learning methods, you know, and that's mm. uh, partly because of my own story, you know. Mm. So out of experience, basically. Yeah. 
Mm, that's very interesting because I think advices that comes from from experience are better <laughs> advices. And it's interesting as well because because of what you mentioned in terms of having grown up in a house with being bilingual with two uh, different languages. It's very interesting yeah. that considering the two main or the most known curriculums to learn the Arabic language, I would say is the Medina books and Al Arabiya bin Aydik. And I have met both uh, authors of the book and I asked yeah. them the same question. Do you think that a teacher who has gone through the process of learning the language from zero to, to fluency is more qualified and is more, um, you know, it's going to be easier for him to teach the language to someone who is coming from his same uh, background. And they both said, yes, I actually think it is so. So, so, uh, so he's, you know, going back to what I said, advices that come from experience are sincere yeah. advices and, and proven uh, methods and advices that, uh, that someone can trust. So, um, yeah, uh, it's, so yeah, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. that, sorry, it's interesting that you mentioned that because uh, the the curriculum that I use in the Islamic Institute of Spain is the Medina books, and if uh, actually the author of the books is not is not Arab, is that right? I mean, mm -hmm. he's from Indian yeah. origin, so yeah. he mm -hmm. he had to learn the Arabic language, and then he developed this curriculum that has helped like thousands of people. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, around the world, so that he is the living proof that that. Uh, actually, when you learn a language, you're able to teach it. And by the way, I've I've, I've also taught the Sp the English language here to Spanish speakers. I I, mm. I taught to a group of, of kids in, in school, and uh, and adults also. And I've come to realize that, like every single question they have, or every single you know stone that they uh, find, uh, you know, in the middle of their path, is something that I found myself in my path, you know? So I do believe that learning languages is actually, and this is proven, it it, it uh, expands your mind to some degree. It makes you more intelligent, you know, if you yeah. systematically learn languages. So yeah. I think it's a, and more, and for a Muslim, it takes a, a, a whole, you know, uh, other level and, and, and a whole uh, meaning. Uh, I mean, it takes a new meaning by itself because you're now becoming able to access the, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that in itself, mm. you know, it makes you more intelligent, like like spirituality develops, you know, and it's it's amazing, you know. So mm. I would I would really uh suggest and I would really you know advise people to get to know what their personality type is and uh, find the best way you know had to learn the Arabic language for them and try to find a system that matches uh, the, the way they're trying to to learn you know mm -hmm. or the best yeah, way I think uh, I think it's very interesting what you mentioned in terms of it sounds very cliche like somebody who learns different languages or knows different languages his intelligence is more developed it sounds very cliche but when you think about it, the other day I came across a video of someone that was talking about how he respects someone who presents himself as a person in shape. Because he says mm -hmm. that if this person is in shape, in order for you to get in shape, you have to go through so many things, so many obstacles that I know for sure you have mastered discipline. You have mastered the art of delaying gratification. You have mastered the art of, you know, learning a particular system and actually applying it like there's so many skills you achieve and develop as you achieve a particular goal so in this case yeah. you know learning language could be one of those goals so i think somehow like that actually definitely makes you and develops your mind to a different to a different uh, extent even sheikh al-islam ibn Taymiyyah, he says uh in the meaning of his words that learning the arabic language it makes you more intelligent so uh yeah. So yeah, very interesting. I actually remember that as a quote from Umar bin Khattab, probably is also, but he mm. said that that it, it increases you in, in intelligence, which is very interesting that they said that because, you know what, I feel that learning, you know, I I myself what I feel after I I learned the Arabic language is that I became more capable of thinking outside of my box and, and this is something very hard for me to explain because when you when you learn another language you learn every language comes from a different culture that has a different 
worldview, a different way of viewing the world and seeing things. Yeah. So when you learn a different language, it's like you are expanding your brain to another way of looking at things, which is mm -hmm. people who, who, who people who have learned uh, more than one language, they, they, they will understand what I'm saying. You know? Yeah. Uh, it's it's yeah. very interesting. Yeah. yeah, to summarize it, with the language comes the culture. When you learn the language, yeah. you learn the culture of the people. Yeah, uh, very interesting. Very interesting, yeah. Uh, one, right, so one, one of my the... teachers, oh, sorry, one of my yeah, teachers said that, that if you want to if you want to understand the Quran, you don't learn the Arabic through the Quran like many people do. You, you learn the Arabic language, how mm. the Arabs spoke Arabic, and then you can understand how the Quran, uh, you know, you know, um, revolutionized their, their worldview, you know? So I think that's, mm. uh, that's very important to keep in mind. Yeah. Yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, so um, yeah, Subhanallah. There's no doubt that uh, that first you you gotta learn the language of the people in order for you to understand, and then is when you understand why the Quran is linguistically a miracle because yeah. of the culture and you know the difficulty of the language and everything that comes with it. But uh. But yeah, I appreciate uh, your input and in, in sharing all of those tips. Now let's talk about the matter at hand. When it comes to personality, why did you come up with this, um, you know, with this method or system for students to first uh, be aware of what works best for them in terms of systems according to their personality. How did that come about? Well, it may sound strange to you. But one of my inspirations was the seerah. You know, when you study the life of the Prophet Muhammad, you realize that he was a genius when it comes to uh, strategy, when it comes to, um, you know, managing people and getting the best of people. And he was not, you know, someone who imposed his view, but he was a true leader, if you, if you want to use that word. And one of the things that you learn is that he... Actually, he was like very respectful and he learned how to uh, get the best of very different people with different personalities, you know. Um, mm. So, for example, when you um, look at Abu Bakr and Omar, just the, the two closest companions, they were quite different when it comes to their personality. But, mm. you know, and the Prophet was in, uh, in some way, he was like very merciful, you know, kind of kind of like Abu Bakr. But Omar was like more stern, but you will find that very interesting, uh, very interestingly, oftentimes the Quran um, approved Omar's view, you know, so mm. it is, it's like Islam is not only balanced, but it is also like embracing all these differences. And, you know, the Sirah really inspired me uh, to understand that there is not, there is not only one way to do things. And actually you have all this hadith in which someone comes to the Prophet and asks, Um, you know, oh, the prophet tells him, uh, best be, um, the person asks for advice and the prophet gives him one advice. And then someone else comes and the prophet gives him a completely different advice, not contradictory, but different, you know. And uh, the explanation of the ulama when it comes to these differences is that, you know, diff these different people needed different advice, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's actually the, the true teacher knows how to deal with all these differences. So that's one of the first things that really inspired me. I said, wow, you know, this is interesting when you study the seerah because the prophet, he did not create like one rigid way of doing things, you know, like the sunnah itself is so dynamic. And then you study the khulafa and they are actually so different and so similar, you know, so there must be something in this. And I started, you know, I became interested uh, in, in, in personality types and uh, this whole thing. And obviously there are like many uh, typologies and none of them is perfect. None of them is revealed by Allah, you know, but, you know, these are like tools that we use and they are useful, you know, and I came across this, this Myers-Briggs uh, personality, uh, you know, typology. Mm -hmm. And I actually took, took the test and I, told other people to do it and we were all like very interested because it was so accurate so the first thing I thought of is developing like uh, a test that when people take the personality test then they get results 
which actually provide them advice from the Quran and the Sunnah based on their specific uh, strengths and weaknesses. You know, mm. that's the first time the idea came to my mind. It would be very useful to have for Muslims, um, you know, advice which is tailored to their strengths and weaknesses. And then I realized that the same can be applied to language learning and to the learning of the Arabic language, because I myself teach the Arabic language. And I want to make sure that I try to help different people, uh, you know, from their perspective, not imposing what works for me, because that, that's what oftentimes we do. Whatever worked for me, I want to, you know, I want to impose it on everyone else. And if it doesn't work for them, then I tell them, well, it worked for me. Well, but you have mm. a personality type that maybe they don't have, you know. So that that's actually when I became really interested uh, in, uh, in, in, in my teaching, for example, of the Arabic in the Islamic Institute of Spain. Like I try to create systems that work for different people. So different people can use it in different ways. So uh, I, I really, that's, that's, actually when I became very interested in, in learning all these differences. And one, one of the reasons is also, as I told you before, in my experience, I realized that I'm so different to, to most of people when it comes to learning um, that there must be some system that works for me better than what I find out there, you know? So mm. it's personal experience and, and learning about the Sira that really uh, made me interested into this whole different personalities, different approaches, you know? Yeah, I'm actually looking at the of what you sent me and I'm looking at my personality test because when I did my personality test as well, it came out as ISTJ and it's so accurate. And I keep sometimes every six months, every year, I try and do it again and, it, oh, and I do it multiple times. It always comes out with the same thing and, um, and it's very accurate. And I'm seeing as well now uh, on, you know, the hypothetical system that would work for mm -hmm. me uh and it says create a structured study plan with clear goals and milestones and focus on learning grammar and vocabulary systematically this is of course in regards of the language but i'm thinking mm -hmm. about my um my quran right now that's literally how i do it as well and yeah. and i think one of the main traits of istjs is uh, alone time and like enjoying alone time and me i rather read to my teacher on the phone and he's only focusing on me than going somewhere going to a school having to wait having to to rely on other students attendance for me to read or i feel like they restrain me from progress so um and i'm looking at other uh you know individuals in my family which i know their their personality result and he says, use creative and intuitive methods such as reading books or watching movies in the target language to engage mm -hmm. with the language on a deeper level and gain greater understanding of its nuances, nuances, or how you pronounce this. But thinking about this is so true. This person in my family, they, they, they do things to memorize vocabulary that I would never do. Me, for, to memorize, I need to sit down and repeat 500 times that thing until it's done. That's it. I move on. I'm very straightforward and I don't, you know, sugarcoat the, the system. But for certain person, for, for certain people in my family, they need, you know, they ask me to, to record myself repeating the word and then the, the, the pronunciation and then the meaning and then, and do a whole audio. And I'm thinking, you don't need that. Just sit down and, and repeat it you know, multiple times and fair enough, both systems work, but, but one is going to work best for someone or someone else. So, um, so yeah, what, what personality test are you? Well, according to this typology, I am an INTJ, which is, um, you know, uh, very like systematic, um, mm -hmm. approach to things. Sometimes people may even feel that it's a little bit obsessive mm -hmm. and, um, uh, you know, the interesting thing is that I used to think of myself that I'm a very weird, different person. Uh, and sometimes I wouldn't even understand why. Like, for mm -hmm. example, whenever I want to do something, I would uh, I would write it down on a paper and put it on the wall. And even my wife would say, man, you're so weird because why can't you just move on and do things? And I would try to explain her, you know, 
when I do these crazy things like writing down and obsessively, I reach my goals, you know, so it, it works for me, yeah. you know, but I, when I learned about the typology thing, you know, it like everything had a specific name and, you know, that helps you feel better, you know, because you don't feel you're so weird. You start learning that there are no. people like you in the world. And, and that's very, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, uh, it makes Believe it easier, it. you know? Yeah, yeah, but that's how it is. That's exactly. And, and, and when I, when I took the test and, and I realized what my typology is, you know, which these are only names and labels that people came up. I mean, it's not like it's revealed by Allah. I just want to, you know, be very clear about that, you know, but because it's also a little bit dangerous when people put themselves into a box, you know, every human being is different, but in general terms, it helps you understand how your mind works. And, uh, Actually, my personality type needs logic and analysis to break down the language, you know, and um, and I really like to approach the, the learning of the language and now the teaching of the language as a problem that needs to be solved through experience. So whenever my students tell me, I would like to have this system here, or this would work for me. I write it down and I try to change my system to make it more open, you know, ended and uh, able to cater for different types of people you know so mm. that's intj and and i really feel that um when i when i want to study i like to attend classes study with teachers but you know um i actually like to take my notes and whatever i i study and spend a lot of hours by myself you know just as you said, alone. And sometimes mm -hmm. one, one of the weird things that I would do is um, I would take my notes, just record it into a five minute audio and then go take a walk, go take the train, travel somewhere and listening the same thing, you know, uh, in, uh, as a loop. And I would just memorize it effortlessly. So I started mm -hmm. researching, do other people, th does this work for other people? And it works for a lot of people, but other people need to sit down with the paper, you know, different things work for different people. And, and you know, and th there is a way to gather all of these methods into one big machine that works for different people. I know it is possible because, you know, I I've done it and I've seen it. And, and I'm a little bit sad that, you know, there are no more, no more people, I mean, no more there are not a lot of institutions that that take this into account, you know, even public mm -hmm. school, you know, they have like these rigid things and everyone has to do exactly the same thing. And it's a little bit frustrating to me, you know, but yeah. that's how it is. That's how it is. <laughs> yeah. I think that when it comes to learning, when I look at, I was thinking about the traditional method, which is, you know, you go to the sheikh and, well, the traditional method could be different because thinking about Mauritania, for example, Mauritania is like you read. If you don't understand something, you stop and ask me. Once you have read this, go ahead and memorize it. Mm -hmm. And other places is kind of like you sit down, you be quiet, take your notes, however you want to do it. And, mm -hmm. and then, you know, and then the class... And then the actual learning starts outside of the class. I'm just giving you, you know, the um, I'm I'm teasing you with what you should learn, or like giving you the structure, the skeleton, and then you go home and and do it. And I feel like I feel that way as well. Many times I would speak to there was a student that I know that was studying in Yemen. His method was, for example, he would attend the class, he will go, he will take his his notes by hand. And then he will go and, and put the audio of another teacher so he mm -hmm. can understand the, the whole subject in different, with different examples, basically. Yeah. Um, and I think what works for me personally is, as you said, I, I rather listen to the class, like trying to understand instead of wasting time taking notes and record. Because we... we mm -hmm. You know, 2023, you can just record the lesson and 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 listen to it at your own pace. I'd rather do that mm -hmm. and first listen to the teacher, like actually engage with him, listen, pay attention, record the class. Then once the class is done, put the audio and with myself, I can stop it. I can replay. I can play it back. I can, if I didn't understand something, I can 
you know, write it down, but it's very, it's, it's rare that I don't understand something because it's, if I'm paying attention in the class, mm -hmm. if I don't understand something, I'll ask the teacher and I will try and, and extract of him as much information as possible. So then I can go to my audio and, uh, and listen to it again. And very rarely I will have questions from the audio because I would have paid attention and actually tried to understand and engage with the teacher to where at this point it's just about like actually writing down my clear notes about about that class so uh so yeah i guess traditional me personally i think that the lesson you always have to have your own personal learning like your teacher can only do so much your teacher is just like he just guides you through the process but the learning comes from yourself yeah uh, it's very interesting in traditional uh, teaching uh islamic teaching that you know, obviously not, not all my dad is are the same, not cultures are the same, but, you know, there's this concept that uh, some people actually, they spend a lot of time with the teachers. Other people, they just, you know, they're, it, it's like interesting when you study hadith, there are like many different types of ijazah, you know, and some of them you have to read to the teacher, others uh, you read and the teacher listens to and he corrects you. And sometimes you only he only examines you and he tests that you have the knowledge and you get the ijazah. And I think that flexibility is something that I love. And especially the science of hadith is like very meticulous and systematic. But at the same time, you know, it's learning is something that you can do in different ways. And uh, I, was going, I was going to tell you something about hadith learning. Uh, I don't remember. But anyhow, what I was going to say is that when you study the the the, the different tafsir, for example, different tafsirs or different exp, uh, you know explanations of hadith, you quickly come to realize that these people had different ways of approaching things, you know, and, and it reflects on the tafsir, you know. So some people are more systems inclined, or other, and they have a very like, for example, Ibn Taymiyyah. One of the things that I, I, I'm uh, when I started reading more Ibn Taymiyyah, I used to read also uh, Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, and I clearly noticed a very different thing when it comes to uh, their way of organizing information. And actually, uh, in my view, Ibn Taymiyyah is a genius when it comes to synthesis, because if, if he has to write a text, he will write, he will write a short text straight to the point, and that text will become very readable for the masses. Whereas other scholars are like very, they go around, you know, and they, which is good also. And there are people who need that, you know, but it's interesting that, you know, scholars are, are, have been very different and that enriches the tradition and, and, mm -hmm. and the whole teaching and learning system. I think it's very rich precisely because people have uh, these systems. And actually, I'm going to tell you something. I, I completely changed the way I write because I, I write articles and sometimes I write books uh, uh, after by the influence of Ibn Taymiyyah. So now when I when I write a paragraph, I just reread it three or four times and I said, okay, is this all in all this information and, and words, is it necessary? What is it? You know, I try mm. just trim it and trim it and trim it until you get like a very eloquent uh explanation of what really needs to be said, you know. Mm. So you know, but it's very interesting to find all these differences in, in different scholars and how they respected each other. And no one said, you know, this one talks too much. You know, oh, obviously there are differences, but there's a lot of respect yeah. among true scholars. And that's very inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. Subhanallah. So what I would suggest, what I would suggest to, to the viewers is that they, uh, um, they take the test. They go to iispain.com slash test. And they take the personality test because they will take the personality test. It's uh, just uh, uh, a couple of minutes. And once they're done, they will get their personality type with uh, advice straight from the Quran and the Sunnah, according to what things they can work on to improve and, uh, you know, what, what virtues they have, because it's also uh, a matter of knowing what your strengths are and then knowing what your weaknesses are so you can work on them. And then at the same time, uh, they will get advice on what's the best way to learn Arabic according to their personality type. And I'm very sure people will find that very interesting. Mm. Inshallah, what, what I would like to see is in the comments, if people who didn't do the Meyer Briggs test to actually 
if if they go to to your website, can does the Maya yeah, Briggs they, test they, show? They, they will or they do have the to test. Know? No, they just go. They just go to iispring.com slash test. They the test, and then they will get the results. So they don't right. need to go anywhere else. Yeah. All right. I would like I would like to see in the comments how accurate that comes for them and how helpful it is. So uh, so I highly encourage you to all the viewers to go ahead and click the link in the description. Uh, do the test and then come back and and let me know how accurate it was, how helpful as well the the tip. Uh, so that way we can you know we can use it actually for for us, for example, who run uh, institutes that teaches the Arabic language, and we can help other people and see like out of percentages how how many people actually find this beneficial, and through that way spread and maintain the Arabic language alive and, um, and available for all, for all Muslims uh, since the deen is being preserved with this language. So it's a sort of that what that you are doing indirectly by doing so. So, uh, so Jazakumullah Khairan to all the viewers. I hope you guys enjoyed. Anything else to add? Yeah, Karami? Yeah, but I, I, would, I, would just, I would just say to people that, you know, I'm not an Arab, you know, uh, and I'm not Chinese, I'm not Japanese. So Chinese is not my language, Japanese is not my language, but Arabic is my language. You know, whenever you are a Muslim, Arabic is your language. It's not because you're an Arab, but you know, because it's the language of the Quran and it's God's final revelation. I mean, so just take it as take it like that, okay? Don't say Arabic is not my language. If you're a Muslim, start thinking that Arabic is my language, even if I don't know it yet, you know. So mm. Go ahead, do the test, and try to find what's what's the best way for you. Tell us in the comments because I'm very interested in, in those types of research. And you know, you should be thinking of, of you know moving moving on. I mean, going ahead and, and, and trying to learn the Arabic language, inshallah. Ta'ala. inshallah. And don't don't forget that, that don't forget that that uh, some of the most important scholars of our tradition were non-Arabs. Actually, mm -hmm. if I can recall Siba Wei, the, the uh, who synthesized the Arabic grammar, he was not an Arab. You know, a lot, a lot of these scholars, Imam al-Bukhari, Imam al-Muslim, these people were not, uh, they were not, you know, Arabs, you know, so this is living proof that this is our language and it doesn't matter where you come from. So, yeah. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let us know in the comments and uh, whatever constructive, constructive criticism or input or feedback that you guys have. And we see you guys in the next one. Assalamu alaikum.